So this video is about how to install Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support desktop into a Windows VirtualBox machine. Before starting the demonstration, I'm going to go over some prior information. Those of you who are familiar with virtual machines can go ahead and skip this section. So where does Ubuntu come from? Ubuntu is an open source operating system based on Debian Linux. The word Ubuntu comes from the Zulu language. Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa explained it this way. One of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks to the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself, and when you have this quality, Ubuntu, you are known for your generosity or kindness. So, there are a number of free virtual environments, and a virtual environment basically allows you to run a separate operating system on top of your host operating system. In this demonstration, I'm going to use a Windows host operating system, and Ubuntu will be the guest operating system. And some of these virtual environments include VirtualBox, and that's the one I'm going to use today. Uh, there's also GNOME boxes, Kimu, and KVM, and they run on Linux, so you have to have a Linux host operating system run them. Hypervisor is a Microsoft's Windows virtual environment, and Multipass. And this is where you can actually use a command line interface to download an image from Canonical, which makes Ubuntu. You could check it out by going to multipass.run. So the outcomes on this video are download Ubuntu 20.04 from the internet, create a virtual guest inside the virtual box management system. So this will be a virtual machine on which you're going to install the desktop. Then you're going to have to update your desktop and also install something called VirtualBox Guest Editions. Now that can get a little tricky with this version of VirtualBox, but I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm going to discuss and set Ubuntu screen settings to 1920 by 1080. Now there are some problems with setting and keeping the screen settings in uh, VirtualBox virtual machines at the current time. But I'll show you one way to get around that, which is not the best, but it'll get you there. So your requirements would be a Windows host computer. I recommend at least 8 gigabytes of RAM, an internet connection, and virtualization hardware support. And this is done through your BIOS. VirtualBox 6 Plus installed on your host computer. 4 gigabyte of RAM free for your virtual machine, which is what you're going to assign your Ubuntu machine. And 25 gigabyte of storage or hard drive space free for your virtual machine. And a 2 gigahertz dual core processor or better. Quad core is better than the dual core for running virtual machines. Software used, you can go through this. I'm not going to read this off. You can obtain some additional info from some of these sources. Again, I'm not going to read these off. You can just stop the video and take a look at them. And I've got a disclaimer. It's time to go ahead and start the install of Ubuntu. The first step in uh, creating this virtual machine is to download the Ubuntu operating system. And to do that, here we are at ubuntu.com. I click on download, and then I go to Ubuntu Desktop 20.04 Long-Term Service. And it says, thank you for downloading Ubuntu Desktop. Now we wait a minute. In my case, I have set Google Chrome to let me pick the download place for each download I make. And in this case, you can see it's Ubuntu 20.04.3 desktop. And I'm downloading it at my downloads Ubuntu, Ubuntu 20.04 directory. Wherever you download it, the important thing is to make sure that you know where it's downloaded so that you can retrieve it later. And in this case, I'll say save. And if you wait a minute here or a second, it will say Ubuntu down here in the bottom left corner. It'll say two minutes left or something like that. And I'll come back to this point when everything is completely downloaded. Now we have a few seconds left before the download is complete. And you'll see that it says zero seconds left. And so it's completely downloaded at this point when you see it says Ubuntu 
20.04.3 ISO. So now it's downloaded. So we'll go on to the next step. Okay, here we are in the second step, and we're going to set up a virtual machine to install Ubuntu on. So we go over here to Machine, New, and we'll give it a name, Ubuntu 20.04.03 DT for desktop. And we're going to give tell the machine folder where it's going to be installed. In my case, I'm just going to pick Other here and select the folder. And the type is Linux, and version is Ubuntu 64-bit. Click Next, and it says the minimum is 1024. Uh, Ubuntu recommends 4 gigabytes, which is 4096, so I'm going to put in 4096. However, I think you could run 2 gigabytes. It will run on a little bit less. It runs a little bit slower. Click Next. And we're going to take the default here. Let's create a virtual hard disk now. Click Create. And default hard disk file type. Click Next. And I'm going to leave it at dynamically allocated. Basically what this means is that when you first install your Ubuntu in the virtual machine, that it will use about 3 or 4 gigabytes of hard disk space. And then it will increase to however you set your upper limit to. And so I click Next. In this case, it sets the upper limit at 10 gigabytes, but Ubuntu recommends 25. But I'll give it a little more and make it 30 gigabytes. And click Create. So now I have my virtual machine created, but there are some things I want to go over here. Make sure that I've selected it. And then go to System. And you'll see I've got 4096 megabytes of RAM. In this case, it's, that's 4 gigabytes. Processor, it says 1 CPU. Ubuntu recommends 2, so I'm going to set this. This is a big difference here. If you could have as many as you can, it makes it run a little bit quicker. And in this case, you'll see we've got the green, and this green is how much is on the actual uh, host computer. And I'm going to enable nested VTAXMD. And this is like making a BIOS setting, Ubuntu Virtual Machine. Click OK. So let's go to display. I'm going to give it the maximum video memory, which is 128 megabytes. I need to go back in there. Uh, monitor count. This is how many monitors is actually showing up. And... The graphics controller, I'm going to leave it at this default setting. Now, there are some problems with Ubuntu in uh, VirtualBox in Windows trying to get this thing to run right as far as the uh, monitor settings are. And leave acceleration unchecked. In previous versions of Ubuntu installing it in VirtualBox, I would always check this. But for this version, leave this unchecked. So now we've got this. Uh, OK. Storage. Now, here we have to locate where the virtual machine ISO file is, or the Ubuntu ISO file is. So I would go to empty right here. I could click on live CD. When checked, the virtual disk will not be removed. I'm going to leave this unchecked because we're going to remove it. And then I'm going to go to where the disk is. Choose a disk file. Now if you remember that it was located, in my case it was in the downloads directory, but it would be wherever you've downloaded yours. And I will go to in the downloads Ubuntu directory 20.04 and there it is, the 20.04.3 desktop. Click Open. Click OK. And we've got audio, network, and USB. So I'm going to basically leave all these alone. If you want to configure shared folders, maybe I'll make a video later on how to configure shared folders. For now, let me keep this simple just to install Ubuntu. And that's pretty much it to set up your... Uh, virtual machine to be installed. 
In this section, I'm going to install the Ubuntu operating system inside of our virtual machine here. If you recall, in storage, we've got the Ubuntu 20.404.3 ISO file set up in our virtual CD. And all we have to do is start the virtual machine and it will load up the Ubuntu ISO file. So I'll click OK here, double click here, and it's going to start. And there it is. It takes a while for it to start up. Now as I'm installing this, uh, one thing I will do is for these types of uh, video sections where not much is going on, I will just cut those out. But anytime there's a decision to be made or something you have to do, I will just come right back to the video. Did a check and found no errors. We'll expand this a little bit here. Finally, after about two or three minutes, uh, in my case, it's about two and a quarter minutes, the place to click here is click on Install Ubuntu. And it's going to ask for your keyboard layout. You've got a whole bunch of different ones. Now, since I'm in, situated in the uh, United States, I use English US. You'll notice that one of the things that seems to be an issue here is that you don't get the full screen, but you should get enough that you can work with it. And then I will show you how to get your full screen later on. And click on Continue. And what apps would you like to start with? And I'm going to go with Normal Installation and Download Updates while installing Ubuntu. Of course, this also means that you have to be connected to the Internet. I'm also going to click Install Third-Party Software for Graphics. Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats and click continue here. Uh, it moved the uh, virtual machine over up here to the left corner but that's all right. Now you've got a choice here it says the computer currently has no detected operating system and that computer right now refers to the virtual machine, not your host computer. What would you like to do? And I would say erase disk and install Ubuntu. Now there are some other things you can do as far as formatting the disk or disks you have on your virtual machine. And there are some advanced features. I'm not going to cover any of these. Just go for the uh, default and click on install now. It asks if you want to write the changes to disk. Basically you're going to have one virtual disk. And that's what we configured when we set up this virtual machine. Click Continue to proceed. And I'm going to expand this again. Back out here. That's where you are. And in my case, I'm in Eastern Time Zone. So I'm going to click Continue. And ask for your name. And your computer's name. And I will just you recall it was Ubuntu 20.04.03 DT and mic name and I'm going to make a password here now I'm not going to make a strong password but because this is just a practice machine but you should always make a password just to especially if you would need to protect some data and I'm going to leave this require my password to log in and then click continue and you're going to get something showing you copying files. And like I say, you're not going to see everything on the install or the whole half hour or however long it takes. Uh, if you want to, you can look and see the features, software you can install, music, photos, and some photo editors. Then you've got your browsers. And you've got LibreOffice, Write. Calc, which is like Excel, and Impress, pretty sure is like PowerPoint. At the heart of Ubuntu philosophy is belief that computing is for everyone. Of course, I include a section about Ubuntu philosophy during the start of this video in the slideshow. And let's see anything else. 
There's support, and that's pretty much it. So I'll come back when I've got uh, a decision to make or the next screen change, so you don't have to watch this continuous install. Okay, after about 20 minutes or so, it, you'll get this will pop up. It says that installation is complete and you need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. I'm, instead of restart now, what I'm going to do is, uh, so you can go ahead and click restart now. And uh, once it's restarted, what's going to happen is you're going to have to add the uh, guest edition CD. So to remove, now it says please remove the inst installation media. And what you have to do is go back over to, whoops, let's make this small. What you're going to have to do is go over to storage. And you'll make sure this says empty, because once it's empty, that means that the installation media is removed. Click OK, and you can bring your Ubuntu back up. Make sure that your mouse goes inside this black screen and click Enter. The mouse has to be inside the black screen of your virtual machine for the virtual machine to capture your Enter key. If everything is OK, your virtual machine will automatically restart and we can go on to the next step, which is install the guest edition. Okay, in this section, I'm going to be installing Ubuntu guest editions. Okay, first I'll log in. So now we are at our first login after installing Ubuntu and I'm going to be in the process of installing guest editions. On your first install it's going to give you a bunch of options here to sign on and everything like that. So I'm going to skip it and just click next. Live patch is a way of securing your machine using Canonical's live patch. Click next. Help improve Ubuntu. That's up to you. Yeah, send the system info to Canonical or no. You can see the show the first report. You can play around with this. Click Next. Privacy. I'm going to leave that. Allows application to determine your geographical location and indication is shown when location services are in use. I'm going to leave that unchecked. Click Next and you're ready to go. And I'm going to click Done here. Now it says Software Updater is ready to go. Normally what I do is with a Software Updater, I update after I install Ubuntu Guest Editions. So I'm going to close this for now. And to install Ubuntu Guest Editions, I go over here to Devices, and it says Insert Guest Edition CD Image. Click on that. Now you have VBox underscore GAS 61.30 contains software intent to be automatically started. Would you like to run it? We'll click yes right here. Now if you want to see it where it is, right here is the guest edition CD. It shows as a CD. Uh, that's where it is on the bottom. And we'll click run. And it's going to ask for your password. So you put in your password goes verifying archive integrity, all good, and installing additional modules. So, it says this system is currently not set up to build kernel modules. Please install the GCC Make Perl packages from your distribution. VirtualBox guest editions running kernel will not be replaced until the system is restarted. So, let's go to return. To build a kernel module, open up a terminal window. Move your cursor to the bottom left of the screen and click on the All Applications icon. When the new window pops up, key in the word Terminal and then click on the terminal icon when the terminal icon shows up. Then key in sudo apt get update. And what this does is updates all the packages so you can get the latest packages of the GCC Make Perl module. And again, 
password. So now it's clicked and done. So now what I want to do is sudo apt get install gcc perl make, hit enter, and it asks if you want to continue, and all you have to do is type in a Y. So after a few minutes, this is installed, and we're ready to go ahead and restart the virtual machine. When it starts back up, you will actually see this screen go to a larger size, and at that point, we will put in all the latest updates. So now log out, power off, and we're just going to click restart so it'll come back and you'll see it bouncing around. After restarting, we'll be asked to sign in again. So now I can go ahead and expand my Ubuntu out. And so now I want to update it. But first, let me dis eject this. So to do this, eject the VBOC Guest Editions. Right click on it and hit eject. So now again, I'll go to where my applications are, all my applications. Click on this. And you'll notice I've got Software Updater. And if, if this doesn't show, all you have to do is type in software and you'll see this pop up. Let's open that up. Here it is. It checks for updates. Now we've already done that check for updates with sudo apt get update. We can also use the terminal to do sudo apt upgrade. Updated software is available for this computer. Do you want to install it now? So we're going to install it now. Again, we're going to have to wait some minutes. Of course, the password. After this is installed, I'm going to talk a little bit about screen issues. But for now, you're going to have to wait a few minutes. So, now the update has been completely installed. So it's taken about a little over 20 minutes on my machine to do this. Uh, of course, the video hasn't been running for 20 minutes because I've taken and uh, removed a lot of the... Uh, boring stuff and only showed you the stuff where you need to make a decision or click on something. So right now I'm going to do a restart now and in a minute when I come back I will be dealing with a little bit about the screen issues as far as setting the screen size and trying to keep it at a certain screen setting and that's an issue between VirtualBox and Ubuntu. So restart now. Now, as far as goes to setting screen size, I have not found a way to make Ubuntu play nicely with uh, VirtualBox to maintain stable screen size settings. For example, if I want to set the screen to 1920 by 1080, I can set it, but it won't keep the settings. I can go here where it says Show Applications, go to Settings, Key in Settings, and then click on Settings. And come down here where it says display, where it says resolution. Usually I can find 1080, 1920 by 1080. Sometimes I can't. And I can apply it, and it will work. Keep changes. Let's close this. Now if I go in, want to power off or log out, if I hit restart or power off, it'll go back to the original setting. It won't go to 1920 by 1080. However, there's another way I can do a screen setting. That is, go down here where it says Virtual Screen 1 and resize to 1920 by 1080. Now, if I power off Log Out and I hit Restart, it will come to the same screen setting, but if I hit power off, it will not keep the 1920 by 1080 setting. So let me hit restart, and we'll see that this works. So I've tried a number of uh, various fixes as I looked on the Internet, but they don't seem to work for every instance out there. And that's a method I currently use is to go to view 
and VirtualBox menu view virtual screen one and then resize to what size I want it. Unfortunately, this solution to maintaining the same screen size is beyond my pay grade. When I first started out with virtual machines as a high school teacher, I spent over 40 hours to figure out how to get Ubuntu screen to run inside Microsoft's virtual environment. And this was just before VirtualBox came out. At that time, I was motivated to find a solution for my students. Unfortunately, the method I use here is a good enough hack for the work I'm doing now. But YouTube videos do not pay me enough to go down the VirtualBox Ubuntu screen setting rabbit hole. As I stated, I've looked for solutions on the internet, but none of them seem to hold out for every instance. And this is the closest I've come, so we'll wait a second for the uh, Ubuntu to come up. Just to show you that if you hit restart and make the setting with view from up here where it says view, virtual screen one, it will come back. And that's only on restart. If I go here and do power, off, log out, power off, nope, it won't. I'm not going to go, you know, make you watch a video to show that that doesn't work. You can check it out yourself. And that's pretty much it for this video on how to install Ubuntu 20.04 into VirtualBox. Thank you for watching.